Hey guys, what's up? My name is Farza, and before I actually start the video, let me talk to you more about what this series is about. So, oh, and by the way, I'm going to be having Wild Turtle play Ezra in the background because Wild Turtle is awesome. Anyways, uh, so programming in the beginning can be very boring, right? But it does not have to be. So when I first started learning how to program, it was in college, and the professor was super bland, and I hated it. I almost switched majors. And I don't want that to happen to you guys, where you don't think programming is fun in the beginning because... It's just not as exciting. So that's what I'm going to do with this series, where I teach you basic programming concepts with examples from League of Legends. So just an example. Let's say I'm trying to teach you how to add in a program. Well, we know 1 plus 1. Let's say I do 1 plus 1 equals 2. We already know 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So that's just that's such a boring example. It's no fun. It doesn't teach you anything, really, because you already know the answer, and you can't really relate to it. But let's just say I incorporated league into it now. So we can do Ari's Q plus Ari's W damage plus Ari's E damage is equal to her full combo. See, suddenly that's a lot funner. It feels more realistic. It feels like you're actually doing something that matters and you're applying the concepts. And that's what I hope to achieve from the series. So if you feel like that's for you, stick around. So the first thing we're going to need is an IDE. And an IDE is basically where you write your code and you can see what your code does immediately. And it's very convenient. So we're going to use an IDE called, if you go to Google, type up uh, code blocks, uh, go to the website, uh, go to downloads, and then click download the binary release. And after that, if you're on Windows, you have to download this one, code blocks 16.01 min gw dash setup. Make sure you download the one where, where it says min gw dash setup. And that's basically the one where it gives the compiler for us. And the compiler is basically what helps us run our code. And I'll talk more about that later. But make sure you download that fourth one right there, MinGW setup. And if you're on a Mac, there is code blocks for Mac as well. But it's just a little outdated. So you should be able to do everything that I'm doing. And um, if you have any problems, let me know in the comments, and I'll tell you a different way to compile your code on a Mac. All right, so once you have code blocks downloaded, go ahead and open it. And, ooh, OBS is open. And I'm going to change just a few settings um, in CodeBlock. So follow along with me here. Go to Settings. Click Editor. And once that opens, uh, everything in Indent Options should be unchecked. So if anything's checked there, uncheck it. And in Code Completion, the first three boxes should be unchecked. So in indent options, everything should be unchecked. And in code, complete, code completion, the first three options should be unchecked. All right. Once you do that, let's create our first program. We're going to go to File, New, Empty File. And we're going to save this program right off the bat. We're going to give it a name. And we are going to call it, what should we call it? Let's call it League.C. And... The actual name of it does not matter, but what does matter is the .c part. That .c is how our uh, compiler knows that we are dealing with a C file and it will compile it correctly. So go ahead and save that. And now we are ready to create our first program. Let's go, boys. All right. So download, uh, I mean, uh, copy this first line I'm writing down. I'm not going to explain what it does right now because it's not super important since we're just learning concepts right now. But copy that down. And copy this down as well. So this is our main function. Imagine your main function is like the command center. It's where everything goes down. It's how your program knows what to do. And everything underneath it is going to pretty much make up our program. So just if you still don't really understand, imagine like the main is a champion in League. If you want to tell your champion to do something, like to move, to uh, use an ability, then it would all be under the main. All those commands would be under the main method. But we also have to figure out a way to you know, say that we're in the main method. Do you see all this white space? Like, if we wrote like over here, and then we wrote over here, and then we wrote over here, how do we know where our main ends? We have to have a way to figure out where our main starts and ends. And we do that using brackets. So I'm going to do a, first I'm going to go to the next line, and I'm going to do a starting bracket, which is the one facing right. And I'm going to first enter a few times, it doesn't matter how many. And I'm going to do another bracket, but this time facing toward the left. So now everything in between these two brackets 
is in our main method. So for example, uh, this random gibberish is in our main method. But if it was outside the brackets, like right here, then it's not in our main method. And it's just sort of out there, it's floating in free space. We don't know what it's going to do, and, it's not, and that's not good. All right, so everything in between here is in your main method. And we use brackets to do that. So now let's go ahead and do something super simple. We are going to print out to our screen. And by print out to our screen, I don't mean like your actual printer. Do not go checking your printer after this. But by printing out to our screen, I mean it'll show a message that pops up and give us that message. So let's print out a message that says, Welcome to Sumner's Rift. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the next line right underneath that bracket. And we're going to press tab. This is common programming practice to press tab when you're in, in your main method like this. So just, just copy what I'm doing now and you'll slowly pick it up. So in order to print something to the screen and see, we do printf. Printf is uh, how we print things to the screen. It is the go-to method for or function in C to print things to the screen. And uh, once, we're at, once we're done printf, we're going to put a parenthesis and we're going to do a quotation mark. So now what do we want? We want to say something, right? We want to say, welcome to Summoner's Rift. So let's type that down. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Let's type that in. All right, and I close it off with a quotation mark as well. So my entire message is in a quotation mark. So you, you're, imagine that you're literally saying the message. You're literally saying, welcome to Summoner's Rift. And that's why it's in quotation marks. So since we have a parenthesis out here, we have to close the print statement off now with another parenthesis. That's how we know everything in there is um, included in the print statement. And the most important part about this is we always end the print statements with a semicolon. And that's because we want to tell our, pro our, um, our program that the print statement is over. We, there's nothing left. So we put that semicolon there so it knows. So we have one more thing left to do. And I just want you to copy down once again because I'll explain it later. But press, uh, go to the next line, press tab, and type in return zero. Like I said, I'll explain this in another video, but for now, just type it in. So now you have created your first working program. This will print out to your screen, welcome to Seminar's Rift. So let's do that. You're, you're going to go to build, build and run, and click that. And there we go. It says, welcome to Seminar's Rift. We did it, boys. All right, so you just created your first program. Uh, quick review. This is your main method. Everything in between the main method is in between the brackets. And to print, the, to print stuff to the screen, we use the print method. And we always, we, we always uh, end the print statement with a semicolon. That's how it knows it's over. Notice we all, even though you don't know what this line means, notice we use the semicolon on this line as well. In most lines in C, uh, most statements uh, or functions in C will end with a semicolon. And I'll explain more about that later. But for now, if you understand this, you're, you're good to go. Um, I hope you guys are, I hope you guys liked the video and see you in the next one.